Thank you, first of all, um, for inviting me. It's a great honor. It's always a great pleasure to be in Pakistan, and especially in my humble way, um, share some of my experiences and um, talk about a very passionate subject of mine, which is patient safety. So um, as you have uh, been given a very kind introduction to myself, um, I am involved in medical education for the past 20 years in a formal way with Imperial College. Um, and have had some experience as well from Harvard. Uh, with regards to that, I'd like to share some, a few points which I think will be very relevant and um, will hope to shape the uh, future trajectory uh, from the point of view of Pakistan and its uh, medical educational needs. So what is happening right now is that we are in our fourth industrial revolution. And I would say almost at the end of our fourth re industrial revolution and entering um, uh, um, an era where, where uh, technology is playing a big part in every aspect of our lives. And that is relevant to how we educate our uh, future generations uh, in medical education, as well as how we treat patients. So the way um, historically, you know, patients were treated <clears throat> in the last few decades is seeing a change. Now, what's so different about it? I mean, we've seen change over the years always. The way, um, uh, you know, patients were examined um, with which tools, you know, with technology, you've got ultrasound, you've got MRIs, you've got CTs. Uh, before, there was just X-ray, and even before that, there was just the clinical skills. I would say I'm a great advocate of maintaining your clinical skills because we are clinicians at the bottom it. So the importance of uh, technology is such that now we hear artificial intelligence, robotics, uh, disruptive technologies, um, you know, taking over a lot of uh, things that were done traditionally differently. So by disruptive technologies, the word disruptive often means, you know, gives a negative view, but disruption means things that we used to do, uh, when they get totally changed by other ways of doing things, then that is a disruption. So in healthcare, we are facing uh, an era where there is disruption. For example, I mean, this example I gave in the workshop that I did yesterday as well, that there used to be the old gramophone, I remember in my grandmother's house, and there was that black record players, I don't know what it is called. Then we had the, C um, the cassette recorders, then the um, CD players, and then iPhones and iPods and God knows what, right? So the newer um, version or newer, newer way of do, you know, doing things was taken, totally took over and made the previous one redundant. So that is a, a disruptive technology, right? Sustainable technology is that something, for example, your iPhone, iPhone 4, 5, 6, and now we've got the iPhone 11. So something which is already there and the technology is improving on itself. So the four most important technologies that are impacting healthcare right now are um, artificial intelligence, you have internet of things, we have robotics, which is machine learning, and there is blockchain. Now, I wouldn't go in too much detail, but it's important because the venue here today is talking about research and uh, the theme is around the sustainable development goal number three, um, wellness, health and wellness. So I have been very impressed by the, you know, the work that has been show, showcased outside and some of the studies I would like to applaud the team that you know, your research methodology are really um, next to none and they are up to the standards that would, I would expect at Imperial College. So, that is something that I'm really very um, impressed and it's something to celebrate. At the same time, um, I would like to 
encourage you all, and especially the people who are, I'm actually talking to the people right at the back. In my opinion, they should be in the front. Anyway, that's my point of view. But uh, the medical students who are the future generation and the future doctors, I'm addressing you, my friends, that the way you will be seeing patients may be totally different, and especially if you are looking forward to going abroad to, to um, you know, get skilled and hopefully come back. And, you know, bring those skills to the people that really need it. You need to know how to um, prepare yourself to pass those exams. These are not just academic exams. It's the way things are being done now. You will be um, seeing patients who have had artificial intelligence being used to make um, diagnosis to tell you exactly which pathway the patient should be put on. Robotics such as the Da Vinci robotics uh, surgical um, automation, which will be, you know, the patient needs to be prepared for that. So I would suggest and recommend that the curriculum needs to be reviewed. And I, uh, Imperial College has gone through a curriculum review where I played, I think, a significant role in impressing them that we need to have learning objectives in the syllabus and in the curriculum which include these emerging technologies. And what the emerging technologies which are here right now may not be the same in a few years. So what we need to prepare our, our students for is the change management. How do they equip themselves to undergo this change? I'd like to quote a study here. It was done at Harvard that the amount of medical knowledge in order for it to double in 1950 was 50 years. In 1980, the amount of knowledge, medical knowledge, for it to double, it was thought it would be seven years. And the amount of knowledge in 2010 to double, it was thought that it would be um, around three years. It's predicted in 2020, the amount of time that it will need to double that amount of knowledge will be 73 days. So in 73 days, what we know now, we'll have to know double the amount. So it is not humanly possible to have that much of information. So educationists are in medical education are really looking at the things that we need to focus on, what is relevant, and take out the stuff that is not really relevant. For example, when I sat my exams, the examiners would try to tease out the most remotest of anatomical existence, you know, the function or the presence of, or the um, anatomy of maybe the pineal gland or something like that. I mean, it would make someone feel very good that, okay, the student has, knows that bit of information, but tell me, in real life, in your practical in, you know, experience, how many patients are, going, are you going to see for, you know, with that remotest of anatomical existence? So it's very hard because we are traditionalists to take out or to change things that we have been traditionally doing, but we really need to take, think out of the box now. We need to see what is relevant for our students to know in our context and also in the wider international um, context where they are going to be going out or match, even if they are not going out, they need to match their competencies. So that when you present your papers on international conferences, they can say that yes, it meets the, you know, the international standards and it is not something that needs further work. So I would plea to all the educationists who are sitting in the front rows that please review the curriculum and see what is the most relevant. And I, important thing is obviously a regulatory body which should take this initiative. But uh, since I've landed in the 48 hours what I've heard, there are challenges there as well. But let's hope you are the future and I'm a very optimistic person. So that uh, in my last few sentences, I would like to share something educational apart from what we are talking today. 
tell me what are the three most important skills to be a good doctor it is number one situation awareness right and it's a skill it 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 actually can be translated in everything we do in life so unless you are fully aware of the situation whether you are at bedside whether you are here whether you are planning your careers your life situation awareness is very important okay it has a lot of things okay what uh, what is happening right now and what are the surroundings and the key to it is why is this situation here what has happened before and the most important is projection that means what can happen from here onwards right a good doctor will always know what this current situation and what can it lead to so that you can preempt so in wellness and in um, you know health we are very reactive when things have gone wrong that's when we come into action if you are situation aware you will know you will predict what can happen and the timeline of wellness and illness is like this it's skewed illness is more wellness is less we should aim that the wellness becomes more and the illness becomes less so number one is situation awareness number two critical thinking you need to i i think like a digital robot so all the information is in my mind like entry points and i need to make sure that based on the situation my entry points are aligned so that my thinking is very logical evidence based you can apply it to a clinical situation i'm a gynecologist by background woman comes in with um abdominal lower abdominal pain with amenorrhea of 8 weeks with bleeding i should be situation my situation awareness should alert me is there a possibility of pregnancy and if it is possible or it is pre uh, you know pregnancy is there a possibility of an ectopic so my alignment and this is what machine learning is experts have put in their algorithms in the machines and the machine picks up what is the most likely event so number 1 was situation awareness number 2 was critical thinking and number 3 is timely decision making if you come to a point that okay this patient has got sepsis but you decide, you know come to that conclusion 5 days later the ship has sailed yes so timely decision making and these three skills are what i would like you to implement in anything that you're doing within your curriculum within your you know clinical teaching and when you are an expert in it you will see that life is also like that but that's a little bit of my philosophical tips that i'm giving uh once again i thank you all it's been a great pleasure and very humble that i'm given this uh, invitation by sir and um um in my capacity all of you are more than welcome to reach out to me uh, for any advice faculty or students thank you so much